Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode in my Scratch Basics episode- Wait, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> welcome to the third episode in my Scratch Basics series. Today, I'm going to be going over the costume page, which is all of this and all of these buttons and all of these things. Don't forget to drop a like and hit the like button and also subscribe and also like and drop a comment down below. So to begin making costumes, you're going to need a sprite or a backdrop. In this case, I'm going to do a sprite. So you're going to want to create a sprite by hovering over here and then clicking paint, which allows you to create a blank sprite. Now, if you don't know how to do this or you don't know how these sprites work over here, make sure to check out my last episode in this series where I go over the editor and the code tab and all of this sprite stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and make a new sprite and name it, and then you'll notice that it'll put us in the costume tab. So once again, you can see that this is the code tab and this is the costume tab, which is the second tab. So you can think of costumes as the visual part of your sprite. So within each sprite, you have costumes. So you can have as many costumes as you want. Right now, I only have one right here. So the first input you might notice is this right here. This is your costume name. You can see if I click that, now this is named costume name. The very first one is the select tool. So if you go ahead and click on that, as you can see, it's blue and white. You can see that we can click and drag and it makes this nice fancy bar. And this is how you're going to move around sprites, select sprites and resize them and all of that stuff. Next, we have the brush tool. So if I go ahead and click this equal sign, you can see that I can just draw with the brush. Then these there's a fill tool, which allows you to fill shapes. So if I make a empty shape and click on the fill tool and then pick a color. As you can see, when I hover over, it turns a color. And then if I click it, now this has a fill. Next, we have the line tool, which you can click and drag to create lines. After that, we have the rectangle tool, which allows you to create rectangles. Then we have the circle tool, which is exact same thing as the rectangle tool, but a circle. After after the circle, we have the text tool. To use this, you will need to click on it and then click anywhere on the screen and then start typing. So you can type any text in here. Now we have the eraser tool, which if you click on it, you can set the size here. When you click and drag, it just erases pieces of your shape. And the last one is the node tool. So every shape has nodes. If you click on a shape, you can see these are the nodes that make up the shape. So this is how I make a lot of my art. If I click on this, I can move it around and shape it. This is how you're going to make more complex art. Now that you understand how to make shapes, let's go over more details. So in the brush, here is the thickness of it. So right now it is 10. But if I go ahead and make this 25, you can see the stroke is quite a bit bigger. Now on the very left, you may notice two boxes. One is grayed out and one is clickable. So this fill is the inside color. So if you click on that, there's a color wheel and you can choose any color. I'm going to make a red color. And as you can see, there you go. We have a red thick line. It works the exact same way for most of these things. As you can see, the fill is the same here. And now if I click on the line tool, you can see that you can't change the fill, you can only change the outline color. Now it gets a little more complex with the square and circle tool because you can choose both the fill and outline color and the thickness of that outline. If I set the fill to this pink color, you can see that the inside of our shape is pink. And then I set the outline to let's say a green color, you can see the outline is green. And now you can choose the thickness of your stroke and it works the same way for the circle along with text now some of these buttons we have the undo button which just allows you to undo what you've done say i accidentally delete that pink circle all i need to do is click this undo button and it pops right in you can also press ctrl z so if i delete this and press ctrl z it comes back i can also do forward and backward so you can see if i click this i can make shapes go in front and behind front makes it go all the way to the front back makes it go all the way to the back forward just makes it go one layer at a time then you have copy and paste so if i click copy now click paste it'll copy and paste that and keep in mind with the selection tool if you click and drag you can select multiple objects or you can hold shift and click on multiple objects and now you can copy and paste all of those objects grouped together you can also hold ctrl c and ctrl v to do that as well if you want to do it quick next we have the delete button which as you can imagine deletes the shape you are on you can also press delete or backspace and now one last feature that i totally forgot about is 
grouping and ungrouping. So basically what that does is allows you to put multiple shapes together. For instance, as I say I wanted to move it, well, it doesn't move in one piece. So it's kind of a pain. All I need to do is select all these so I can just click and hold shift and I can press this group button. So now when I hover over it, it is always just one shape. Now say you want that not to be one shape, just click ungroup and now it is ungroup. And finally, we have flip horizontally and vertically. So if I make a shape here, all I need to do is select it and now click flip horizontally and it'll flip it. Or I can do vertically and it'll flip it vertically. So there's a few more things that I need to show in the vector tool. When you click on the selection tool, you can click on any shape and resize it with these corners. Rotate it like this with this little thing down here. And you can also hold alt to resize it evenly on all sides or even shift to resize it freely from the corner. For the line tool, as you are creating a line, if you hold shift, it will snap it perfectly flat. So that way you can get consistent angles throughout. Another note is if you have a line and you hover at the end, it'll pop up a circle and you can make a connected line there. And then I'm going to pull it from there to there. So now I have a fully connected shape that I can give a fill to now. And last but not least, we have these buttons down here. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll and then hold shift and scroll and that'll go right and left and up and down. You can press this equal to reset your zoom, this to zoom in, and this to zoom out. You can also hold control and mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so now that you understand this, I'm about to tell you something that's going to change everything. So what I just showed you there is vector. Now, this button you may have noticed called convert to bitmap will change it to bitmap mode. In Scratch, there are two modes. One is vector and one is bitmap. So if I convert it to bitmap, you can see that my tools totally change and our image gets all pixelated. So bitmap is like painting. There's similar tools such as the brush, but you can see that now it is pixely. This circle, it looks smooth, but then once you place it down, it turns into pixels. And keep in note that once it's down, you can't just click on it like in vector and change the color. You'll have to use this fill tool and then change the color and then click on that to change that fill. Another note is there is no go to front or behind. It just plops it all on the same layer. And then the selection tool just selects that that chunk. Now I'm just selecting whatever piece I am on. You may be wondering, well, why would you ever want to use bitmap? And all I need to do is zoom in to the center point. So now that I'm zoomed in, I want to show you why you would want to use bitmap. Turn your brush to one pixel and now you have a pixel art brush. You can see that it is perfectly snapping. I really quick make a shape. So if I go ahead and do this, okay, so now I just made a shape. I'm going to fill that with one white. I'll give it some shading really quick and some eyes. There you go. I just made some pixels, but you can see on screen it's tiny. So all you need to do is set the size to something like 450. Now you have pixel art. Look at that. That is something you can't do in vector efficiently. So a quick recap is bitmap is for like pixel art and you can't click on it and change the color. But in vector, if I click convert to vector, I can really move around specific shapes. Once I draw them, I can still move them around and I can change their colors and you can go in between vector and bitmap. For instance, I just drew our character in bitmap and now I converted it back to vector and I can freely move this around. I just can't change the fill. Now keep in mind if you edit this, like make this bigger in vector and then go to bitmap, it's going to turn it really weird and kind of pixelated. I would advise when you first create a costume, choose what you're going to do. So say it's vector, keep it in vector mode, and then just do that. Say you accidentally click this convert to vector and you didn't mean to do that to your pixel art, just click this undo button and now it's back into bitmap mode. Alrighty, so now that you understand this, how do you make multiple costumes? Just hover over this button right here, the choose a costume. So there's multiple options, kind of like the sprite. So the first one is choose a costume, which allows you to choose costumes out of this library. So I'll click this muffin, yummy. And now I have a muffin. Now you can see that this is vector because I can move around each piece individually and I can change the color. So that is how you know it is vector. Along with, I can also change the shape of it still. You can see all of our costumes go right here and we can have as many as we want. So now if we click on the one, it goes back into our first costume and it is in bitmap mode. Then we can click on our muffin 
and there we go, it's our muffin. Now that I have another sprite, I want to show you the right click. So I have export, which exports it as a SVG, or if it is in bitmap mode, it exports it as a PNG. The other button is delete, so if I click delete, it gets rid of it. Once again, that's the same effect as clicking this trash can. And last but not least, there's duplicate. Duplicate just makes it an exact copy of your costume. So I'll just go ahead and select all of this, move it down. Now I have one and then two. You can see that it's just a little idle animation. Next, we have a paint tool in this pop-up. This creates a blank costume for you to do whatever you want. After that, we have surprise, which imports a random costume. So it gave me a ghost. And last but not least, we have upload a costume. So if I click on that and I'm in my downloads folder, you can see this is that sprite I exported, the 1.png. So if I click on that and click open, there you go, I have a PNG of my costume. Keep in mind, it will possibly resize it as you can see here. The file type can be any of these. It can be PNG, BMP, JPEG, GIF. So there's a lot of possibilities for uploading costumes. Last but not least, over here is where all the costumes go. You can easily just drag and reorder them and then this number underneath it shows you the pixels by pixels it is this is eight by eight let's go ahead and look at how do you actually use that in a game go to looks and use these two blocks right here so you have switch costume to and next costume the next costume switches to the very next costume from the one that is on so say it's at one the next costume would be two. Let's test that. If I click one and click next costume, there you go. It goes to two. Or you can use this right here, switch costume two. So if you click this drop down, you can see all of our costumes right here. So I can do switch costume to one. There you go. And then you can start putting this in your game. For instance, if I do a wind green flag clicked, which detects the flag being clicked forever, then switch costume to one, then switch costume to two. Go to control and add a wait time in here. And instead of one second, let's do 0.1 and I'll put that in both of those. Now you can see that when I do this, our character plays both of the animations. So it looks like it's idling. And keep in mind that this works the exact same way in the backdrop. So in the backdrop, I can use a vector and draw this, or I can use the bitmap and draw stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.